and NH Tots. Welcome to this week's Wacky Wednesday. As you can see, it is crazy hair day. So grab your own hair or somebody else's and do something really crazy with your hair today. We have loved seeing all of your pictures that you have posted throughout the day. You've been really creative and that's awesome because we're talking about creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. And our good friend, MC Haggis, and his friend, Seamus McFamous, are going to show you what creativity is all about. So check this out. Hey there, I'm MC Haggis, and uh, this here is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Say hi to him, Seamus. All right. This month is about creativity. Imagining what you could do because you are made in God's image. Now, if you know me and Seamus work, you're probably thinking about the phrase creative genius. Am I right, Seamus? Right. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you look up creative genius in the dictionary, it's not there, because it's two words. Anywho, me and Seamus have been trying to think of a way to show creativity, and we got nothing. I mean, we tried all kinds of things to spark some creativity. For instance, we uh, took some tin foil and some electrical tape and some toilet paper rolls nice. and we, we put them together and we made a little rocket. And the result? Yeah. I mean, not a hint of creativity though. And look at this. Ugh. We didn't just bake some cookies. We, we baked cookies that included our favorite snacks in them. We, we made cookies with beef jerky bits, mmm, -hmm, and cheesy puffs, and, and, and french fries, but, you know, mouth-watering, but no spark of creativity. <sighs> we even knitted socks for sheep. I know, it's weird. You know, even the sheep were like, I'm not wearing those. <laughs> We even played some intense games of math bingo. That, that's where someone calls out the math problem and you try to find the answer on your bingo card. Okay, the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. still, no creative ideas. Hey. I guess I'll just eat one of these original recipe cookies. The ones with the popcorn are my favorite. <laughs> They're very creative, Seamus. Hey, creative? What was I thinking? Up in the knee. Kick it. We've all got capacity for brain productivity, imagination proclivity, to imagine what we could do because we're made in God's image. Creativity, word. Oh, wow. Oh, give me a oh, give me a uh, on behalf of me and Seamus, I'd like to apologize for not thinking we were creative. Yeah. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna have one of these cookies too. Oh. Hey. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, what is this flavor? Hey! Oh, dog food! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys, it's time. We have loved seeing all of you guys complete our challenges the past couple weeks. But right now, we're gonna do our point totals. So, Woo! let's go through our teams one more time. Who do you We've think's got... in the lead? Mm. Preschoolers, maybe. Uh, all right. Nice. Okay, so we've got our purple power preschoolers. Ooh. We've got our orange crush K through second grade. Second. Uh, Ooh, go orange, orange crush. And, then and third through fifth is green thunder. All Feel right. the thunder, right? It's Here raining today, Let's so do perfect. Ready? Drum roll, please. All right. In the lead, You're Purple right. Power Preschoolers with 8,300 points. Followed by Orange Crush with 5,300 and Green, Green Thunder. Thunder. Bringing up the rear, come on Green Thunder. We gotta get it storm started, all right? With 4,400 points. But we're about to introduce the challenge for this week and it's anybody's game. Also, if you dressed up today and did some crazy hair for Wacky Wednesday, don't forget to post your pictures before you go to bed tonight I for a thousand was... points oh, per good. team. I'm glad you said that. That I could change everything. Uh, so, <laughs> we're taking all of that into account, your pictures, 
and also this next challenge, which we're gonna show you right now. Hey friends, we have been hard at work practicing our paper airplane folding skills. I'm not very good, but you know. <laughs> Okay, because you our guys are going to need some awesome paper airplanes for today's challenge. This week's challenge will test your paper craft deviation. Mm -hmm. This week's team challenge is called Crash Landing. And here is how you play. Gather several sheets of paper like this, mm -hmm. and after you grab your paper, fold three of the best paper airplanes that you can find. Mm -hmm. Okay, you need three. If you need help, Ask a sibling, an adult, or Google it. Or there's lots of examples on YouTube and other videos you can find of how to do really cool paper airplanes. So after you have your best airplanes folded and ready, you can find an empty laundry basket like this one, okay? Don't make your mom mad by emptying the clothes all over the floor. That's not good, okay? Fold them first. Fold them first. <laughs> Maybe even put them away. Really wow them, okay? Next, you have to make a starting line, kind of like we did last week. You can make it with chalk, uh, mark it with a broom or a shoe or anything you've got. There we go. Next, measure 10 feet and set the laundry basket down in the ground, okay? After that, head back to your three perfect paper airplanes and have someone start a 60 second timer. You'll have 60 seconds to fly your paper airplanes into the laundry basket. Then gather your three airplanes up and go as many times as you can until time runs out, okay? Mm -hmm. Woo! At the end of 60 seconds, count down how many times your airplanes landed in the laundry basket. <laughs> then send us your team color and your score. And that's how you play Crash Landing. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to send us your points so your team can fly to the number one spot. Get folding. <laughs>
just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. I just wanna thank you, cause everything you made is so Just a reminder that something Yay! very special is coming up and I have two very special people here with me to tell you about it. Remember, <laughs> September 13th is going to be our epic give day for BGMC and we're challenging... BGMC! BGMC, that's right. We're challenging every kid to raise what, Audra? Money! Money! <laughs> yes, that's right, Wyatt. Good job. And we've already got a hundred on us. Yes, we made, 200. We met our goal and so do you think we can raise some more? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, where does all of that money go to? To Jesus. To Jesus, Jesus. that's right. Because we are helping missionaries all over the world tell people about Jesus yeah, and we yeah. can help by doing what? So what did you guys do to raise money? Jesus. For Jesus. What did you do, Audra? Tell us. We did a lemonade stand. What else did you have? Cookies. Cookies and snow cones. Snow cones. Mm -hmm. And did it get really long? Yes, it did. <laughs> yeah, it fell over. And it fell over once. It was not that easy, but did you keep going? Yeah! Yes, and a lot of people came and supported us, so thank you for that. And people want to support you too. So just get the word out there of something you're doing for Epic Give Day, and I promise that you will meet your goal. Mm. All right, good job, Audra and Wyatt, wherever he is, and show us what you're doing so we can share it with other people. <laughs> Guys, we are so, so excited to announce that we are back in person for services this Sunday. We are offering both early childhood and elementary services, NH Kids, NH Tots, for our 930 service, and we're offering NH Kids in our 11 o'clock service. So we are so excited, really pumped about it. For more information, go ahead and check out both of our Facebook pages for any questions that you may have. So excited, can't wait to see you guys this Sunday, 9.30. Hey guys, how many of you like the color purple? Hey preschoolers, go purple power, whoop whoop. Okay, that aside, let's talk about the color purple for a second. Purple was a very special color back in biblical times. Do you know who wore the color purple? Purple was usually reserved for people who were royal or people who had a lot, a lot of money. That's because the color purple was so rare, you couldn't find it anywhere. The book of Acts tells us about a story about a woman whose job was to sell purple cloth. Her name was Lydia. And because we know that she sold purple cloth, we also know that she was a wealthy woman. She had a lot of money. We also know that she was a believer in God. Because when we meet her 
in our story today. She is at a prayer meeting with Paul and Silas. Now, I know that we have been talking a lot about Paul and how his life glorified God and how with everything he went through even, he still had very great faith. Faith is believing in what we can't see because of what we can see. And even though we have talked about Paul a lot these last few weeks and his great faith, today we're going to talk about Lydia and her great faith and how she put her faith into action. So we are going to open our book to our Bible to Acts chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. We're going to read that. All right, here we go. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we sat down to find a place of prayer. We sat down and we began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of, let me see if I get this right, Thyatira. I got it. From the city of Thyatira. Her name was Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. She considered me a believer in the Lord. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. So that is Paul writing about his experience with Lydia. Lydia heard that message that day, which Paul had told these believers. They needed to also believe in God's son, Jesus. Paul told them that Jesus was a descendant of David and that God had raised him from the grave in order to offer forgiveness of sin. Lydia believed in Jesus that day and she and her whole household were saved and it says they were all baptized. But Lydia's story doesn't end with her just accepting Christ. Lydia invited all the believers to come and meet at her house. In fact, scripture says that she begged Paul and Silas to stay with her so she could take care of their needs. Later on in that same chapter, we read that Paul and Silas were put in prison. In verse 40, it says, after Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house where they met with the brothers and sisters and were encouraged by them. Then they left. They were in prison and they got out. And as soon as they were released, where did they go? They went back to Lydia's house where they were cared for once more. A lot of people think that becoming a Christian is all about what we call our personal walk, their relationship with Jesus. They think it's about Bible study, small groups, Sunday school, quiet times, prayer. And it is all about those things, but that's not all. Being a Christian means putting our faith into action the way that Jesus, his disciples, the Apostle Paul, and Lydia did. Lydia didn't wait two or three years to start serving God. She didn't say, as soon as I get everything straightened out with God, then I will serve the Lord. No, she accepted the Lord and she immediately offered to God what she had, her home. Having a personal walk with Jesus is very important, but if we never open our eyes to see others' needs, if we never step out and take action to meet those needs, are we really acting like followers of Christ? Lydia's story reminds us that we don't need lots and lots of years of walking with God to serve Him. You just have to be willing to take action. How today can you help and love others? How can you help your mom or your dad today? or maybe your brother or sister? How can you help or love your neighbors or your friends? It can be small acts of kindness and love, such as maybe taking out the trash or helping with dishes. Or how about sharing a favorite toy with your sibling or playing their favorite game with them? Or maybe you can bake some cookies for your neighbors and leave a little note that tells them that Jesus loves them. There are so many ways that we can put our faith into action and love and serve others. And the best part, which Lydia's story tells us, is that we can do it today. All right, so we are going to pray and thank God and also ask him to just help us find ways to, to love others better. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes, fold our hands. Dear God, thank you so, so much that you love us, God, that you gave your, your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. You're amazing. God, thank you that you give us the ability to help and love others. Lord, help us to look for those needs. Help us to find ways to serve others, to love them, God. 
Lord, bless our day, bless our neighbors, our moms, our dads, our siblings day. And we love you so much, God. In your name I pray, amen. Friends, remember, you can serve and love and help others starting today. You don't have to wait until everything is straightened out with God. You can start right now. All right, that's it for tonight. So we love you guys so much. I, we are so excited that we will hopefully get to see you this Sunday. Can't wait to see you. Love you guys. Bye.